Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all keeping well. So in today's video, I want to show you how to draw a metallic sphere using Sketchbook Pro. For this project, I found this really nice sphere, which appears to be a render of some sort. Now, before I start drawing the metallic sphere or any other object with a specific texture and material, it's important to understand what's going on with its colors, light and reflections. In this case, we can see the sphere has different layers of white, grays and black tones. Look how the colors also blend between them quite softly. These are all good indications of how strong the light is, what objects are in front of the sphere, which in this case are none since there's no reflection of any kind, and what kind of metal this might be. So if we're drawing aluminum or steel for instance, the tones might be lighter than with tungsten or titanium. So to begin with, in a new layer, we'll use our circular selection tool to draw the outer sphere. This is the maximum diameter that the object will have, and it's best to start this way since we'll then have complete control of what's inside the sphere. Use your paint bucket to draw the base color of the sphere. Then in a new layer, we'll draw the white highlight. And in order not to draw outside our circle, we can select the gray tone we've just drew and add a new layer with the selection area still on. This will lock the area we want to draw so we can easily apply some white color. We'll use our airbrush tool with a medium size and flow to do this and pass it over the sphere several times until we're happy with how intense it looks. Then in a new layer, using our circular selection tool, We'll draw a black circle that is smaller than the first one and right at the top of the sphere. When you're done, you can use the ellipse tool to scale it to the size of the black circle you just drew and use your airbrush with a very small size to blend the outer line of the large black circle you just drew. This small detail will make a huge difference in your drawing. Then in a new layer, use your airbrush to highlight some gray tone over the black circle.
In another layer, use your airbrush once again to draw the white reflections right on top of the sphere. If you feel you've added too much light, you can use your soft eraser to take out some color or play with the opacity of the layer. You can see how there's almost an abrupt contrast right on top of the sphere between the black and white sections. You can make this by setting the airbrush size smaller and using either the curvature tool or the hook tool to make a nice continuous tangent line. So at this point we're actually almost finished with our project, however we need to give the sphere some sense of position in a space. To do this add a new layer right behind the entire sphere and use your paint bucket to fill the area with your desired background color. Also, use your airbrush to add a light shadow on the bottom of the sphere. You can use a black color or dark gray tone to do this. You can also adjust the opacity and tone of each layer of the sphere as you wish at this point as a final touch to the object itself. And here you can see there's some black shadow on top of the sphere which shouldn't be there, so it's best to take it out. 
To do this, I'll go with the first layer we drew of the sphere, which was the base gray color. Use my selection tool and click outside the circle to select everything outside the sphere area. Then I'll go to the layers that have the excess of color and press delete to erase those black shadows. If you see there's a black line right on top, you can erase it slightly with your soft eraser on the layer where this stone is at. Now finally, let's give the entire background area a nice rounded contrast and more light hitting the sphere. And to do this, we can darken the background color slightly and in a new layer over the background, use our airbrush set at its maximum size and white color to start filling the rounded area around the sphere and give the impression that there's some light hitting the object directly. Lastly, I'll move all my layers to center the sphere and when doing so, it's important to have all the layers active, otherwise you won't be able to move them around freely. And we're done! So you see this is a very simple exercise to do and you can get very creative with your software and tablet. Let me know what you think about this quick tutorial and if you like what you saw don't forget to hit that like button. Also if you want to see more sketching projects don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more traditional and digital sketching projects. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day!